I'm Koa Smith, and today I'm gonna be walking you through and breaking down my five favorite waves I got in 2020. I got to sneak around the globe this year, fortunate enough to explore Indonesia, Panama, Morocco, It's the beginning of 2021. It's kind of a crazy time. I got down in my journal, jotted down my last year, reflected on my favorite moments, my life lessons I learned, and that brought a bunch of happiness and clarity. So real quick, I challenge you, write down your favorite moments from last year and see what you can learn from that. That might help you with your direction this year. But without further ado, let's dive in. The fifth best wave of the year for me was at Scar Reef in Indonesia. And got to hang around Bali for a little longer and do some strike missions to some outer islands, explore some new waves that I've never surfed. This right here, Scar Reef, was my first time surfing it. Scar Reef's one of the most famous waves in the world be able to see what the reef looks like, what the wave looks like, and kind of compare all your stories you've heard to your real life experience. And that's what made this wave so special. Literally the inside was like six inches deep of the most healthy, alive coral I've ever seen. So I had that image in my head. Sometimes they let you out and sometimes they don't, but I was fortunate enough to lock into this epic, perfectly glassy tube. If you slow it down right here, you can see there's like this reflection of like perfect glass on the wall. And there's almost like a little bit of rainbow reflection. That's like one of the most beautiful things about surfing right there. Coming into number four, the same Indonesia trip, we're going to Desert Point. Desert Point is another one of those mythical Indonesian point breaks. The conditions just turned on right here. There was six to eight foot, the winds were flying offshore, the sun was out. It was one of those situations where you're kind of just pinching yourself. You're like, is this real? I just need, all I need to do is stand up on a wave. And I was paddling up the face of this wave and I didn't think I was gonna go. Last second, I'm like, what do you mean? I came all the way to Indonesia, I'm going on this wave. Dropped in and bottom turn and the wave sped off really fast. You can tell every time my arm goes in front of the lens. That's like a full lunge, pumping as hard as I can. I didn't think I was gonna make it the whole time, I'm kind of bracing for impact. Came out, a signature little scream. That was just like a really powerful, exciting man. into number three. Three. We got Mother Pipeline. Now I spend so much time out at Pipeline and I still feel like I've never accomplished getting the wave of my dreams, the wave that I want. But I'm slowly getting there, keep putting myself in the right position. One day it's gonna come. This whole crazy year we got locked down here on the North Shore. Beaches were closed, cops were roaming around but Pipeline was open, and we were fortunate enough to get out there and score some late season swells. But my most memorable moment came in late January. The winds were offshore, four to eight foot back door. And it was a little bit wider on the reef, and I whipped around, barely caught it. You can see I did a little like bucking bronco backside airdrop, and then just beelined it for the channel and it broke perfectly and peeled across the backdoor reef up into the off the wall reef and just spit me out into the channel. That was such an exciting one because I didn't think I was gonna make it the whole time. It's like, ah, ah, whoa, ah, whoa, ah, and then it's, ah, woo! 
Woo! <laughs> Let me out. My fingers went all wild and I got back out there to try to get another one. <laughs> Number two, one of the most emotional, craziest trips of my life, Morocco. Went down there with Billy Kemper, Luke Davis, our shaman Jerome was just whipping us around the coastline, getting the most out of every hour of daylight. We were surfing like 12 hours a day for four days in a row, best waves of our lives, and then, boom, worst case scenario, Billy catches his last wave, hits his hip on a rock, breaks his pelvis, blows out his knee. There's gonna be a crazy six part documentary series coming out in February. Definitely check that out. Was surfing so much and got a lot of crazy waves, but there was one that stood out. So this wave in particular, I love so much. It's a right sand point break. It gives me an opportunity to like get some backside barrels, which I love to do. And what I love most about this is it's a long barrel, but then it also is just like such a crazy wall that you can just belt, backside turns, backside turns, bing! A little air drop there, another backside turn, bing! At this point, like your legs are just burning. You've already caught 10 waves similar to this, and it becomes a full endurance thing, but you're digging deep, this is what I train for, this is what I live for right here. You never know when you're at the end of the wave. I remember I finally made that. I was like, oh, you can see my little handshake. I was so excited. Those waves are so long that if people weren't filming, you wouldn't even remember what happened. There were so many emotional points on that wave that it just, at the end of it, when I finished it, all it was was a bundle of good feeling. I didn't even know what happened. And number one, drum roll, Panama. Panama was one of the scariest strike missions of my life. We just heard about this mythical Chopu, but a right in the the waves are so close together that you can get two to three wave hold downs My brother and I didn't know what we we're getting into trying to surf this wave that is borderline unsurfable It was an emotional couple days the waves were huge and we're trying to learn this new break Waves are second reefing. We're getting almost caught inside. I was like Maybe this isn't for me. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna take off on these waves. These waves have come in like a giant pizza slice. And the only way to get into them is totally commit from this side, hope you make the drop, and get barreled through the barrel of your life. After a couple days of trying, I was like, you know what? I just need to do it. And I picked the right wave, and I just threw myself over the ledge behind the pizza slice, Airdrop looked up and just remember seeing this vision of like, oh God, like that's just the scariest thing I've ever seen and I'm way too deep, I'm gonna fall. The way the wave is, it pushed me with its momentum slowly all the way out and then just let all of its energy out and I was still standing on my feet and I was just like, oh my gosh. Just all that built up of emotion of like, I don't want to go, like, I don't know if I can do this, like, I'm scared, like, I think I might die, to just like, no, I got this, and then just all the adrenaline pumping in my veins, so, so crazy, and all that commitment, all of the experience from trial and error that day, all paid off right here. I mean, it was the wave of my life so far, the most emotional wave of my life. Luke Davis got one of his best waves of the year. Travis got one of the best waves of his year. And I also got the best wave of my year. That's a super session right there. Those are one of those sessions you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. We're in 2021 now, a clean slate. My goal is to get a better wave than I got last year. Don't forget, write down your goal. What do you wanna do this year? As always, thank you so much for watching our videos. Kick the like button this time. Kick it, okay? It really helps our channel if you subscribe and turn on that little bell. 
We've got a lot more action coming very soon. Woo! Click maybe this one or maybe this one.